please check out the description down below. All of our guest links will be down there as well as our own. If you wish to talk with us, we have a Discord. Let us know how stupid we are. Thank you. Enjoy the video. Hello, welcome to Metaverse DGen. I'm Lion. I'm all on Raptor, and our guest is. That'd be you, sir. I'm Thousand Faces. That'd be you. Hello, Thousand Faces. <laughs> it is a pleasure to nice meet you and have you on. To meet you. Yes. Oh. Uh huh. What you say? Huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So, what is it you do here in VR? VR chat. Uh, I uh, like to uh, kind of push the limits and experiment. Uh, I feel like a lot of VR is a learning lesson, uh, both how things are done, uh, you know, game industry and everything else. Uh, but mm -hmm. a personal passion for me is um, AudioLink, Audio Reactive. So um, I like to find the symbiotic relationship between our space and our world around us and the music, almost like in developing us like a blanket. Okay. And... How did I you get a question? Ooh. I got a question. Yeah, shoot away. How, how'd you get the name Thousand Faces? That's that's unique. Very <laughs> unique. Uh, that's actually a good question. So uh, for me, uh, switching between voices is not very hard. So everybody listening in there, they're like, where are you from? But uh, it's not for me to like talk about from country. You know, it's like where you go. My and that's like, you know, when people get down to it, it's not like one thing or another. I could just swap between it. And then uh, someone's <laughs> like, man, you got like a thousand voices. And then I was like, man, I, I got avatars too. So man, I say like, it's, I've got like a thousand faces with it. So when it's pretty easy for me, to go between them that wow. transition between each accent and voice was so smooth that's impressive yeah, wow that's cool <laughs> yeah. no shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how did you get started in this whole adventure you're in now with what you're working on and the name and all that like what oh, started it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's actually, uh, uh, really funny. So, uh, uh, COVID hit, um, and I was like, man, I always wanted VR. Um, I, I kept talking about it. I actually talked about the technology that's coming out today, um, about 15 years ago. So before VR chat was even a thing, I was talking about this technology. I was like, oh, this is what it's going to be. This is where it's going to go. Um, and I was doing my own thing in life and I saw, you know, I would seen people in VR. COVID hit, I had saved up money and I was like, oh, I'm going to get a PC. I'm going to lose my sanity. I need to talk to people who need to socialize. Um, and I met someone on No Man's Sky. And he's like, oh, yeah. And he was playing VR. And talks about VR chat. And it's like, oh, yeah, there's clubs and stuff. And I was like, ah, I'll, I'll try it out. Went in PC mode a little bit. I was like, okay, let me try this in VR. Got an index. Um, got sucked into some communities. Quickly, um, <laughs> alcohol was the answer to many a social occasions. So I um, <laughs> met a lot of people very quickly. Um, I think within the first two months, I went from like five friends to about 400 wow. um, on my list. So um, yeah, I was in a lot of places behind the scenes, around places. Um, and then eventually I met a community. Um, they got in like, hey, do you want to build worlds? And I was like, oh, isn't that like complex stuff? They broke it down for me. My first world was so terrible looking back, it hurts. Uh, so, uh, then my second world was even worse, uh, but it was like prettier. Um, and I was like, oh. Um, then eventually it started like uh, maturing. I learned about Blender um, and got into that. And yeah, ever since then, uh, when Audio Link came out, um, I was talking about it before it released, and I fell in love with it, and my life is Audio Link. Oh, wow. That's impressive. Now, did you do anything with this like, world dev work but before you got into VR, or is this something you self-taught yourself from the beginning? Um, I had one person um, start me off. They, they got me the basics, um, and I, I brought a friend with him. He didn't stick around. Um, and then after that, I've pretty much been self-taught completely since then. Um, I've had people kind of a little bit here and there, but um, it is pretty much completely self-taught hmm. okay that's that's honestly very impressive that you're able to do all this like looking at your work here it's amazing between all the moving pieces behind in here and then you got all the audio link on top of it and the frames are very decent on top of that 
I look at worlds like this, and my immediate thought is, oh, my frames are going to crash, but it's amazing. It's very well put together, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's a mixed feeling, because now as I've learned since then, I can look at this and be like, wow, I could do this so much better and probably get you uh, maybe quarter or double the frame rate that you're getting now. And it's like, mm, yeah, but coming back and redoing it, it's like it's rebuilding from scratch. So uh, you just push forward. Okay, so yeah, alrighty. So, what is is there anything that you know that you're excited for coming through for like uh, world development here in VR, or that you know it's coming on down the uh, Yeah, yeah. I'd say um, big things that are are exciting um, is it's always been talked about is uh, persistence, world persistence. So the idea that like you can edit a world, leave it, come back, and those changes that you did in VR chat um, will maintain it. Um, there's some workarounds, some people already have it, but it's not um, easy. It's not a smooth system. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, as a coder as well, a uh, software developer, uh, JSON formats coming out for us who are writing scripts in the background. Um, so technology is going in the direction to support more um, knowledgeable people writing custom scripts. Um, importing external information into worlds, so we now can bring, uh, originally it was just videos, now we can bring in pictures, we can bring in text, um, it really opens up the door to more creativity. Okay. That's really awesome. I've heard of, I've never heard of all that. So that means, like, if you're going to be in a world, like, or whatever, you can have posters go up without having to re-upload the world, if I'm understanding correctly. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, it's already out. Uh, so some worlds, uh, some of the bigger name worlds you've probably been to already have that uh, built in. Oh, wow. That's really awesome. Well, mm -hmm. It's quite impressive to see where VR chat's going. I remember when I first came in a few years ago, things looked like maybe like PS3 in some places, best way to describe, but now they've progressed <laughs> yep. so far in two years. I can't even imagine it's the same game. Yeah, actually, uh, VRChat is migrating, uh, they did an announcement a while back, to Unity 2022 or 21, um, which I believe will open up the ability for them to uh, introduce ray tracing. Um, I don't know what that's going to mean or if that's going to be adopted. Um, the other thing they're opening up is uh, something called Async uh, Readback, which will allow um, your GPU to talk to your CPU, which means... Uh, shaders, the things that dictate our structure of our world, um, can better communicate. Okay. So someone already has put um, a Linux kernel on a shader, so you can actually go into a world and it can have an OS writing inside the world, and it will load up into your uh, GP, and then you'd be able to like actually have a working computer in a world. Wow. Ooh. That's amazing. That'd so you can nice. have like our like build like little arcades and stuff like that within VR, in theory. Uh, you could have Unity rebuilt inside of VR chat, yeah. Oh, wow. That's... I can't... Yeah. Holy nuts. shit. That's <laughs> nuts. <laughs> That's nuts. That's actually I... off the wall. Wow. Cool. Holy shit. That's quite impressive. So here soon, maybe in another couple of years, we won't even recognize VR chat itself. Holy shit. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> honestly, uh, it's VRChat as a whole um, is really a frontier. Um, we've got the largest community. Um, a lot of our people really push the limits. There's always new stuff. Um, I would never tell myself as being a genius. Um, I definitely get the bug um, of curiosity. I push the limits in my own way. But there's some really, really talented people out here um, that create things that you would never think possible. And... A couple of years from now, those limits they push now will become a normalcy, um, hopefully, as we introduce them. Okay. So back when you, during your journey, what was some of the harder things for you to learn and, and to push through? For the... Ooh. Um, I'd say, honestly, the biggest thing is learning um, a process. 
Um, processes are more important than anything else. Um, forget Blender, forget Unity. Um, the steps you take. Um, if you learn a bad habit, it's going to take you five, ten times as long to do something that someone else can do instantly. Um, and that's more important than anything. And you're never going to get it on the first try, so don't ever fret about it. Um, just get a process, learn how things work. Um, and find your pipeline, you know, your steps. I do this first, this second, this third, fourth. And eventually you'll find out you're wasting time in certain ways, and if you move it around, it saves you a bunch. Um, and once you get that down, that means, oh, if I want to make an avatar, I don't spend a month doing it, I could spend two weeks. And then you get better, and you say, oh, this tool came out, or this resource, and I can do it in a week, or I can do it in a couple days, which means you can spend more time doing weirder things than just doing the standard things to get yourself in a position to do weird so okay all right what was what was the one of the weird things you you you've done since you've started between now and then <laughs> uh okay so i've got a couple of uh, uh programs throughout the space um it's not in this world uh there is another world where i have audio reactive um uh gravity Audio so the idea crap. is you go into a gravity well. Yep. Yep. Um, basically, when the music hits, it throws you around. It'll suck you into locations oh, based on music. Shit. Um, holy it'll toss shit. you. Wow. I have uh, tunnels that'll warp um, to uh, the music. So it'll like swiggle like a worm left and right. Um, it's really great to bring drunk people to. Um, it's a yeah. personal pastime <laughs> favorite of mine. I say, hey, you want to come check out this world? And then like, oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> so they stay in it and it's a straight cool. tunnel. Yep. And then I put in the music and then the tunnel starts sliding left and right and yeah, it's uh it's great. Um it's a personal favorite a passion of mine. Um So yeah. I mean, it used to be worse. That was well, it on, guess um, what? you don't get mo you don't get motion sickness anymore in VR. You just in the bathroom barf it up because you bounce from one part of the tube to the other. What are you? You drunk? No, I just drew up in the tube, man. I don't know where I'm at, but I'm over here barfing all over the place. That is so fucked up. But it's funny. I like it. Sounds oh, it's like, great. Wow. I give people warning ahead of time. <laughs> big time <laughs> holy shit i think it'd be one of the things you shouldn't warn them about like go uh go into like a drinking night drop a portal without saying anything watch people flood into it <laughs> and just watch the chaos as people fall over <laughs> <laughs> well actually actually the the best one is uh there's a world i have it's got an audio wreck of magnets so it pulls you into the music um and with an audio link control panel you can like you know dra drag and drop the bass uh, and yeah. the intensity and i'll tell them as they say go over and give it a hug and it's it's hanging <laughs> in the sky and they'll run underneath it and like jump up and down i'm like i can't hug it and i'll slam the throttle down <laughs> and it'll just chuck them into the sky. Um, and my favorite was someone did that and as you hear them going up you hear Whoa! And uh, yeah, they uh, oh, wow. <laughs> they wow. went up, and their stomachs went down. So, <laughs> holy! Shit. Now I tell people ahead of time, you're gonna give it a hug, so be ready. But <laughs> that, Damn. that sounds really awesome and impressive. Is that something you see a lot of people doing, or is that something that's like strictly and unique to you? <clears throat> um. I have never seen anyone do any of these things. Uh, my personal ambition is to audio link every aspect of an environment. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I test everything. Um, there's, it's kind of like a standard, like no, no, like um, parts of practices. Um, when you're in VR, people don't like being thrown around. Yep. Um, I didn't care, so <laughs> I just like, what happens if I do? Um, yeah, the worst one, though, is I have a, I have a script that uh, allows with audio link, it amplifies your jump. So if you jump when the bass really, really hits, um, it basically throws you up and you never come back down. <laughs> Holy shit. I never patched wow. it. I was like, this is really entertaining. Um, yeah, your menu <laughs> just <laughs> rates too, because it tricks you up so high, so... Sounds like quite Holy the setup. Christ. Have a club event going, uh, convince the DJ to say jump at the right moment during a breakdown is watch the entire club disappear. 
<laughs> we actually did install uh, one of them in a world. We had a magnet on, and uh, the DJ could turn it on, and like people were standing, and it was a really slow, but they would like start to get all sucked in, but there was a barrier. And then, like, it was like people, like one of those cartoons where they're all like stuck to glass. Yeah. And they're like all in this giant circle stuck to this glass around the DJ. And uh, you can hear people like just screaming and be like, no, what's going on? And I was like, ah, oh, this is what I live for. Um, the client was like, afterwards, he's like, yeah, we're going to discontinue that. Too many people have been like, and I was like, but that was great while well, we did. So. <laughs> Holy shit. It reminds me. It reminds you of Skeeter's stuck to the windshield of a car going down the highway. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. High speed speeds. <laughs> oh, there goes another one. Oh, there's another one. Wow, this is great. This is an entertaining shit. Can we do this all night long? See how many people we piss off? Why not? What the hell? We got nothing better to do. Holy shit. Indeed. I hope to uh, oh, yes. some someday put it in a world as a trap where we can target like a, a player that's misbehaving, and when the beast hits, it'll just like chuck them in the sky. Oh, so be like, wow. oh, you're acting up, you know? What? <laughs> wow, that'd be a bitch. <laughs> Fuck, remind me to stay out of that section of the fucking room because I know I'll be in trouble. I'm always <laughs> mouthing off. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, you could uh, have like a giant uh, funnel up in the sky that's invisible, and as the base sucks him up, launches him through the funnel through some public portal, out of the club. <laughs> Technically speaking, it's against our uh, viewer try TOS. We're not allowed to do it, but you know, <laughs> it ain't our fault that he came down and landed in the funnel, and there was a portal at the bottom of it. That was my problem. You know, that's one of the things. You know? Easy answer. There was a there was a platform. You know, it was very tiny. If they moved left or right, they fell off the platform. You know, they moved. That's on them. Fall all even. Whoop whoop. Oh my god. When did you start wow. all the shenanigans? If, if for the with the world development, like what started this passion? Like the first <clears throat> instance that made you want to go, yep, I'm having fun with this. Oh, um, uh, so I made my homeworld, uh, uh, which is Music Forest. It came out a while back, um, and I found mushrooms in it, and I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. Um, and I was going to do a originally, like, audio link, uh, a swing that would, like, throw people up to, like, the upper treehouse. Uh, at that time, I didn't know how things were working, and I was just kind of messing around. Um, I had a dance floor that would bump people up and down. Um, and I did do the whole world, um, where the whole terrain would actually bump up and down to the music. Um, that didn't go over very well. Uh, so I got that out, but I was like, you know what? I still want to do that, like something. Uh, so I was kind of ever since the beginning. Um, it's always in the back of my head, like, ah, where, where can I cause trouble? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, what's one of your favorite worlds you've worked on, then, amongst all of them? <sighs> oh, that's a, that's a tough one. Um... Uh, they're each kind of like their own. Um, if you imagine like uh, children, right? You like yeah. you give birth to a world, you create it. Um, they each kind of have their own meaning, their own purpose. Um, one of my favorite ones is we did a uh, the Boss Wave event a while back. Um, actually, with VR Chat, it was on um, oh about six or eight months ago. Um, it was on the front of the VR chat landing page when you came into VR chat. It was like, hey, here's Boss Wave. Um, and you could click on it and take you to the portal. Um, I loved it because we got to push the limits. I learned a lot of stuff. I worked with a great uh, community of people. Um, one was Panamath, another one was uh, called Mystery. Um, and we, that's when I learned about baking and bakery a lot more. Um, and then shaders. Um, and it was just a really nice passion. Um, working with people, I think, is probably the best experience I can get out of it. Wow. That's quite awesome to hear. No, I have a question about that. What is Boss Wave? I've mm -hmm. never heard of it. Uh, yeah, uh, so Boss Wave is a world from an event uh, five or six months ago. Uh, it was a hybrid event um, with the headliners being um, 
uh, Nero and um, Pendulum. Okay. Um, unfortunately, they had a, a first release album that day, so they had to shut down the event uh, before those guys came up. Uh, but it was a four-day long event. Um, it oh. was uh, it was stressful. Um, learned a lot. We had a uh, uh, constant updates almost uh, every couple of hours. Um, I was there on site in real life in the U.S. in uh, Pennsylvania. Ooh. Um, had my laptop out and, you know, I'd be, you know, five o'clock in the morning doing an update. Okay. Um, and then back up at like nine at the venue. Um, but yeah, no, I, I see, um, it kind of opened my eyes on what's c- kind of coming. I think in the future, um, we're going to see more hybrid events. The idea of portaling between reality and virtual reality mm. and the idea that you can transition or, um, attend an event in either or. You know, if I'm overseas and I want to go see something that my best friends are, if I could go to the VR event, I can wave at them through the portal or interact in some way, but I can share that experience without having to, you know, spend the money to fly out, be there for a couple hours and fly back. Yeah. I actually remember hearing of one one club in Europe that does that. I don't, it's like a mirror system in VR. And then on the other side, they see a TV screen all the way around. I remember hearing about that before. That actually be a pretty nifty way for people to interact with each other, especially like with traveling and stuff. I agree with you there. That'd be pretty sick. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I, yep, could, yep. There, I also it's, remember hearing if, ooh, good. one of my friends who's in robotics is also telling me about there's a new hologram technology too. So maybe instead of just using screens and mirrors, it'd also be a little combination of both if you have the cash to afford it. Instead of being a screen, they'd see you like a mm-hmm. hologram of your own avatar. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. No, you're fine. Uh, I, I, so um, I actually wrote like uh, about almost like 15 years ago, I wrote a paper on the concept of, you know, where I see the future of this stuff going. Mm. Um, and I think one of the things that we're going to see is, you know, right now VR chat's the largest um, group where you can have 80 people in an instance. Um, and unfortunately, the biggest limiter to that is our GPUs and our networking. Yeah. If those two are resolved in some other manner, uh, especially networking, um, then you just have a hardware issue. Yeah. But, you know, as we progress there and we get those numbers higher, if you have a, a venue in real life where you've got a thousand people and if you're experiencing an event where you have um, AR, so augmented reality or XR, and I have um, a rhythm, a beat, where I feel a pulse. I could conjure up by voice command using AI, say, hey, I want to summon up, you know, an elephant in my hand. And I can grab the rigging of it and yeah. do motion. So when the beat hits, so thump, thump, thump. Yeah. And then you create an environment of the audience is building um, a virtual environment in synchronous with the music, the uh, programs pick up on it, and then you release it into the wild around your surroundings. And then if you mix that with a, a VR event, you could do both sides. So they're bleeding into each other as people build artwork in real time to the musical event that's continuing to give birth and, you know, go forward. Oh, that sounds insane. So... Where do you see AI in our current technology with VR? Do you see it anything happening interesting with it, or is it possible to use in a way similar? Um, I th- yeah, I think right now um, the biggest um, utility that we're going to see AI is the idea of um, commands to expedite you know, a process. I say, hey, um, ChatGPT, give me uh, 5,000 lights, or give me uh, an elephant walking at a, you know, five meters a minute mm-hmm. and it sets up finds out calculates gets the motion uh pulls from a library of resources and places in the world mm-hmm. and the faster i can start putting things together the quicker i can start modifying the details to what i need okay so i think that's where ai is really gonna uh, assist with us along with the idea of creating textures from our imagination i think one thing that um isn't here yet um but will is you know textures create our environment but if we could say hey i want to um have an ai that says hey take all the artwork of the world and retexture it in this theme so i can retheme the world to my own vision and you see it completely different you'd see 
like the normal or your vision. But I went, hey, I want this whole world to be like cyberpunky, and it reskins it now with my vision. Okay. And that's something that's possible. You think would be possible now? And would that be a global or local thing? I'm sure that depend. I think. I think that could be something on both sides. So someone shares that information, you cash into a server, and it sends it out to everyone. Or uh, we can definitely do it already now, mm. where you know I put that voice command out, and then I can grab that actually from my GPU, and if I intercepted it and replaced it, I could rescan it um, using um, stable diffusion locally on my PC. Oh wow, that's really impressive to hear that AI is possible to. Use now and all that amazing stuff to be honest i'm quite excited to see where ai goes with vr vr chat it's quite interesting to see what people do with it i remember seeing a uh, ai player celeste i think her name was uh, it was a vid mm -hmm. yeah fia did a video on it uh i think that's her name my brain and it mm -hmm. was it was quite interesting to see that that ai will be able to remember everything from its session and then on top of everything you said, it's quite, it'd be cool to see where we go the next about five years. I'm sure it'll be very different. Cool. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot more uh, AI interaction. Um, you know, I, I think the, the biggest thing that actually had this discussion recently with someone else is that as a society, uh, as a species, the human species, uh, most of our servers um, are designed for older systems. Hmm. They're not designed for AI in mind, so AI resources are really uh, uh, cost prohibitive. Hmm. But now as we're focusing and specializing in AI-specific hardware, costs go down, which means opportunity and usage goes up. So I, I, I don't know where it's going to come from, it, but I do know that it's going to be um, new, and it's going to be more prevalent, and we're going to start seeing it uh, more as a standard use case in our environment. Hmm. I do remember, I was reading there's... Three different companies making robotics with AI, like uh, the Tesla bot, for example, and there's two other companies doing it as well. Mm -hmm. And then I also remember reading in Europe, there's a company that works on copying you as an AI. So you'd answer a long list of uh, invasive questions about you, your past, your memories, everything. And then it'll spit out an AI that will sound like you, move like you, and talk like you, the whole nine yards. And it was initially marketed to like those who are slowly passing away. So if like you're dying and you want to leave a version of you for your family to talk to, it'd be there in their social program. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure at some point those things will combine together and you can make any any personality of a robot you want and then order it and it'll be sent to your house. It'd be like nannies or work bots or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That actually uh, brings, uh, this branches off the AI categories uh, is a very broad sense, but uh, you, you sparked my, my uh uh, curiosity and conversation on this. Um, there's actually uh, a lot of the stuff that you're bringing up is things I've had with a lot of other people um, conversations about. Mm. And one of the things that I, I foresee is I, I'm pretty good at seeing like where technology goes and where it's going to come. Um, I may be off by a couple of years, but I kind of see like you know within five to ten years what's going to happen. Mm. I think what's going to probably see is uh, in a couple of generations, uh, very soon maybe one or two, every person will be born with an AI, much like our phone. Okay. And the idea of uh, my most basic example of uh, describing this concept is most problems we have in our world is miscommunication. Um, and an easy example of this is when I say the word elephant, you tell me the color. Most people will choose gray. Yeah. Right? Well, I thought pink. That's my default. I've done this so many times. Mm. But I have to add context. You have to know what I'm thinking unless I speak those extra words. But if you get an AI that's born with you, learns like you, matches you, knows how you think, how you communicate, if I leave out those details, it communicates to your AI, these are the things are that are different in what I'm saying, you know. That's okay. clearly, you know, my thought process is a little different, and then you would perfectly understand me, then it fills in the gap. Okay. So I think we're going to see that, and when you pass on, you'll have an AI that's been with you your whole life, so at that point, it's kind of a mirror image of you. Mm. So what do you think they'll do with that AI? Will it just kind of be deleted, or will they put it in a robot and, or something and send you off to do something else? I think that is the questions of our future. 
Those oh. are things that are not going to be easily answered now. Uh, what we will do, I have no idea. What we can do uh, is limitless. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, mm -hmm. But I think more than anything, it'll probably be archived at the very minimum as a way. So like you were saying, you know, you pass on and someone wants to continue talking to you. Hmm. Okay. You know, there's a bunch of smaller technologies over there last year. Like one of the things we talk about a lot is like uh, transhumanism. Like well, it's not heavily, but whenever something mm -hmm. cool comes up, we'll talk about it. Like for example, there's a company making synthetic skin. It could be either used for robotics or humans. Mm -hmm. If like you get a burn mm -hmm. or an injury, you could put it over yourself and it's like a intelligent skin that'll reheal itself and stuff like that. And I see that possibly being used maybe within a gener two generations, you'll see more human-like robots instead of like very 50s sci-fi. Because <laughs> everything- I, I think yeah. before that becomes a norm, mm. it's, it's gonna be a while until that because we have power issues on. So I think until we have easily self-charging or carbon-based uh, power systems where they can consume food uh, for their energy or you know sugar or reserves um i think that's going to be a while until that becomes a norm mm. it's 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 still kind of cool to think about all the possibilities like we're not quite there yet like well, for new power i think fission's being made by mit right now and another european college so i think at some point soon we may have a stronger source of power whether or not we can make that miniature and put that in things i don't i have no idea <laughs> That opens up, yep, a whole different conversation of, uh, of possibilities in the future. <laughs> Sadly enough, it's way bigger than what my brain can comprehend. <laughs> <laughs> Only so much of that. I know a little bit about it. I, I, st <laughs> I studied for nuclear a while back, so I, I'm somewhat familiar with the concept, but... Oh, you studied nuclear? Like nuclear power and stuff of that mm -hmm. nature? How'd you get into that? Mm -hmm. I was gonna... Uh, it was my mailing list. Uh, part of the thing of a uh, thousand faces. If I also done uh, a lot of jobs, um, I've done housing renovation, demolition. Um, I've been a blacksmith, a uh, welder, CNC operator, uh, technician. Um, <laughs> I've done a little bit of security. Um, God, he sounds like me. Sign, e, um, in there with anywhere, anywhere I can stick my yeah, hands. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Yep, yep, right, right with me. Um, I, I saw computers being the future when I was uh, in robotics. Um, or, or I was in uh, welding. I saw robotics, and I was like, "Oh, this is you know, technology is going to be coming." Um, I was like, you know, there's the way the future is going to go. Um, funny enough, I think the biggest thing is uh, robotics is much farther ahead than we realize. The only thing that's actually holding us back is, um, in some ways, um. Uh, capitalistic oppression <laughs> that's my, my theory on it where um automation comes in takes away too many jobs you have a problem and then people protest um but you already see it happening fast food can't get enough um and robotics are coming in and it's not like they're new these are machines that have been out for like 10 15 almost 20 years in some cases um they just never introduced them mm. so um just about time yeah well as time goes on, you see people starting to embrace a lot of that stuff, at least slowly anyway. For example, like I think Amazon has two test stores where it's all self-automated, cashierless, where you like put your hand in a little ball thing and you go off into the store and order. You have cameras and computer systems and programs watching where you do. You pick up like a bottle of juice, put it in your cart and walk out with it and it'll charge your account. All that stuff. People are starting to embrace sort of. Um, as a Westerner, yes. Um, the rest of the world is already kind of there um, in some ways. Um, if you take out of the Western Hemisphere or Asia, uh, at least in China, you there's places where you no longer need a cell phone or ID or anything. Oh. Uh, they do facial recognition and they'll do a uh, uh, handprint. So if you put your hand over, it'll scan and it'll know immediately who you are, track you with facial recognition software, see any purchases you need necessary um and tie it all to your kind of global account um so mm. things are going in that direction the hardware the technologies there just the societies um of different biospheres have not caught up mm. how long do you think it'll be till society catches up oh that's uh 
it really depends um, in a lot of ways. I think uh, the one thing that people don't recognize and I think is, uh, is the biggest threat um, is lack of knowledge. Uh, people are severely uneducated on technology and the limits of it. Um, I've also worked in security a little bit. Um, so for example, like all the information you need to track someone, you don't need their name, you don't need their address, you don't need their phone number, heck, you don't need anything about them except for two things. When they entered a location and when they left it. The oh. exact timestamp that they've done that. Um, because your, your, um, phone will send out signals on applications to a giant pool for advertising. You can buy the advertising block of data find the tag of when someone entered and left, ID that phone, and then track it from then on. And it's making an assumption, but then I can just follow you anywhere. Oh. Um, so it's it's here. Um, people just don't recognize it. Um, it's just not been implemented. And it's whether or not society adopts it. You know, the more knowledge that the society has, the more dangerous the individual becomes. The more dangerous the individual becomes, the more power the state needs um, over the individuals for protection. So it's a, it's a yin-yang. Um, so I, that's a big, complex answer I can't really give you a true uh, response on. Okay. That's very understandable. It's, I'm sure we'll see how that goes over time ourselves. That is quite interesting mm -hmm. to hear all of that. I'm surprised that the U.S. has, or Western countries hasn't caught up as far as places like China and Japan to be honest. We're always mm. behind. We're always been behind line. Mm. We've never been <laughs> fast enough to keep up. It's been that way since I was in school. We were always trying to keep up with Japan or China, even in education. We're always behind in education. Mm. They're always ahead of us. Used to be the other way around. Now it's the other direction. We used the United States used to be way ahead of them. Now it's the other way around. Mm. Just the way it goes. Oh, it easy thing, like, with no, yeah. Another one of my fa uh, faces is saying too is people do one weirdest thing of it all. People don't like change. It's too fast. I don't like it. I don't want change. Well, like we talked before, Lion, right? You go with the flow or you get left behind. And that's mm -hmm. the way it's always been. Mm -hmm. You had something you wanted to say? Yeah, no, that's an that's honest statement. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean that that go with the flow. That's that's honestly what VR is now. I mean that's the this is the future, mm -hmm. and we're already kind of here before the the masses come. Um, but you know the one easy argument with that is um, everyone's like, you know, where do you see VR in the future? People see it as gimmicky. But an easy argument I give everybody is um, when you started with computers, when you started with your phone, ten, twenty years down the line, did you give it up? No, you maybe changed how you used it but it became a way of life for you. So you have tens, if not hundreds of millions of kids that have Quest headsets, they grew up into it. When mm -hmm. they get older, are they going to give it up? Nope. No, they're just going to change how they use it. Okay. So the mm -hmm. idea is, if you look at it in that aspect, as VR is already now part of society, Facebook did right. You know, they're betting on the long haul, uh, but they try to like rush everything and do it now, mm -hmm. um, which is their biggest flaw. But they set the stage, and as long as they continue to stick it out for another 10 years, 15 years, oh man, that's going to change everything. I mean, I just saw recently a news article that um, Truck Simulator already has advertising in it for truck companies to hire people playing the simulator. Really? So, do you, yeah, it's already, it's already out. So if you imagine any other simulation software, if you have like free games you can download, if those are sponsored by a company... Well, I want to say try the McDonald's, you know, thing, and you do a really good score. McDonald's could be like, hey, we've got a store near you. We notice you're unemployed. We would like to hire you because you're going to walk in, and day one, you're going to perform better than someone we train off the streets. Wow. I do remember yep. reading some articles as well. as uh, There are a lot of other different industries as well using VR, such as engineers, police departments. Even schools are now starting to use it to teach things like history. There's a uh, mm -hmm. a company that makes v uh, tech, and they're bringing quests to the schools and doing a demonstration lesson in school. And I think they sold out like 46,000 headsets already, or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, um, honestly, uh, I tell everyone, um, the foundation of VR is actually education. Mm. Um, so if that becomes the, the foundation, then from then on forward, everyone can build it. You know, it's, it's, um... I'm a, I'm a minimalist person, so, you know, I try to use the least amount of resources possible, but in VR, as long as you got a computer, the space that it takes up is digital, and you can go maximum. You know, I can virtualize as much as I want, and the better the physics engine gets and the simulations get, I can do as much here um, as I could in reality, and more, and it takes up less space. I don't have to worry about costs, I don't have to worry about anything else, it's... This, my sandbox and my imagination are my limits, not my financial pocket. Hmm. All right. Do you think VR will go, uh, tech will go towards VR or augmented reality? Oh, uh, <laughs> um, no matter what's going to go towards AR, um, AR is the future. Um, because AR is everywhere. Uh, VR is wherever you can set up shop. So um, there, there's no argument on that. But um, as long as VR has the resource um, higher resource limit, um, it's always going to exist. It's the idea of having a desktop and a laptop. Laptop, I can go anywhere and work. Desktop, you know, it's stuck in a location, but it's still popular because it's got the hardware to do much more. So that's the idea of like people going from a quest to an index. Quest, I can go anywhere with it, but performance and you know appearances are much lower. Where an index, you're locked into a location that you set up, but it's amazing. So mm. same concept applies. Alrighty. So are you a quest person or an index person? Both. I uh, actually have. Uh, I've, I'm an index first. Uh, I got the quest to see and be able to work in it. Um, and experience it. I actually um, have a setup where I can work remotely using the Quest. So oh, wow. I can um, set up, yep, I can put a laptop aside, I can set up, spin up three virtual monitors, and it's all, you know, by, I just need a keyboard and mouse. Mm. So I can close the laptop, put it in my backpack, bring out my headset, uh, spin up three virtual monitors, remote connect into a PC that I need, and start working right away. Oh, wow. That's pretty awesome wow. to hear. When did you do that, and how tough was it mm -hmm. to set up? Um, it's probably take you like an afternoon or two uh, to set that up for a quest. Mm. Um, you might have to do a little bit more depending on what your setup is. Um, but it's really not that hard. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's software out there. The, the software I use is free. Um, but you can pay and get up to five virtual monitors. So, okay. Holy shit. So what's the the software you use for the virtual monitors then may I ask? Oh uh I know Oh, Immerse VR, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Let me double check if I'm saying it right. Um uh... Um Immersed. A I N M E R S E D. Okay. Immersed VR. Alrighty. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool to hear. Then does that work with the Quest platform specifically, or do you have to use some workaround with, like, a, a virtual desktop and stuff of that nature? Oh, no, you you are, you are need a laptop that it's going to port into. Um, so what it does is it runs on the same Wi-Fi network, mm -hmm. and it will basically stream your, your uh, laptop or desktop uh, to the headset. Okay. Um, so as long as you've got, you know, keyboard and mouse that are Bluetooth and wireless, you can send signals, you can work anywhere in your whole space and other rooms if you wanted. Um, you just slide the headset down and you're good to go. Okay. Hearing all of this, would it be possible in the coming future to, for like AR and VR to connect? So like you'd go from, like, let's say, for example, you'll, you'll go to a real life store, you'll get virtual co content, toss it in your account, and then slide everything back into VR. What do you think about that? Um, so that's called like a XR, and I, I think, yeah, I mean, that's already kind of uh, coming. Uh, one of the things I think that um, no one's capitalized on and is my theory. Um, if you guys played Spider-Man at all, any of the recent Spider-Man games, yep. yes, no? Yep, I played it. Okay, so you know you've, you've got a huge city, right? Mm -hmm. Procedurally generated stuff, a lot of it, uh, when you look into it, there's actually no depth behind it. 
Um, but imagine that you had like the actual stores there and you had like almost like a portal where you swing in through the city. It's got a low poly and you say, hey, I want to walk into the store. You walk into it and you walk into the v VR session with an actual clerk there. You can purchase stuff. Mm. So if you had that hybrid environment where I can say, hey, there's this, uh, you know, vinyl record shop and I can't physically drive out there or if I don't want to or whatever, but they want access to me, but I want to talk to someone. I don't have to call them up and say, hey, yeah, that thing with the face, with the head. I want to go to their virtual store. They have a headset that has XR. They see both reality and they see anyone in VR that comes to their store and they say, hey, how can I help you? And they can come over and service you. Okay. I think that's going to start coming. That'd be pretty cool. So in essence, you'd see like, would you see them or their virtual avatar, do you think? Like if they walk in through XR, for example. Uh, prob um, if, if I'm seeing the store clerk, it'll probably be like a, a virtual avatar, and then they would start mm -hmm. my virtual avatar in return. Okay. That's really sick. I'm actually co quite excited to see that happen. To be honest, the whole mixture of both. Although then there'd be ads. They could virtually place ads everywhere. <laughs> well, they could, but if you think about it, the, the store themselves is an ad, right? You know, they're advertising Fair. their products. So if you're walking into an, it's like walking into Coca Cola. You know, don't be surprised you see Coca Cola brand. Um, but if you're there, you're buying Coke. So um, that's where I think it is gonna go in the direction of um mm. and ads make up our space we're used to it um we have no to ignore it but you know the idea being is without it it also doesn't feel normal so it's mm. become such a natural presence um with it missing it, it feels different so okay i think we're gonna see it either way Alrighty. um is thank you very much for joining us mr faces it's been a Pleasure actually Thank meeting you, you and talking with you. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Pleasure as always. Um, yeah, I would like to comment. So uh, I uh, work with and uh, started up a group a while back called Be Virtual Reality. Uh, we work with people to uh, find creators for any of their needs. So if you're looking to get worlds or avatars or anything done, um, we are focused on the creator community as a whole. So uh, if you guys are looking, you can contact us at uh, bvr.net. Um, or which is B double E, so it's a bumblebee. Um, or you can go at contact at bvr.net, um, is our email. Hmm. Um, but yeah, we try to basically anyone who feels like they don't know the space or they're not comfortable with it or want to trust someone else or they don't have the time, but you've got the money and you're just looking for someone to get it done, um, we try to connect people. Okay. That's, we'll have all of nice. the links you'd want right down below. Whatever fun stuff, be sure to check down there. Hmm. Uh, thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. And guess what? I don't have any faces. He does. He's got more than I do, and I don't even know what to do. <laughs> have a good one, folks. Take care. I think to say, cheese, cheese. On the phone.